All right, folks. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the Redivis RT-52, and we're going to take a look at how we can restrict it to only working on amateur radio or ham bands. Out of the box, this radio is capable of transmission and receiving on bands beyond ham or amateur radio frequencies. Taking a look at the outside of the box, we can see it operates on 136 to 174 and 400 through 470. Before we get started, I did want to say that I was contacted by Redivis and they asked if uh, they could send me this radio for testing and evaluation purposes. So I just want to be clear that I received this radio free of charge from Redivis in exchange for this and other video reviews. Here you can see that I can use the rotating knob on the top of the radio or the keypad to enter in or dial in frequencies outside the ham bands, which are 144 through 148 and 420 to 450. We're going to use the Redivis programming software and a connection cable to connect this to my laptop and go ahead and restrict the access to the ham bands. So go ahead and stay tuned while we go through that. You can see on the right hand side of the radio there's a speaker and mic port that we'll use in conjunction with a programming cable. It's important to note that this radio does not ship with a programming cable, so you have to buy that separately. I'm still doing some tests on the cable, but I believe it's just a pass-through cable. There is no serial chip inside. At least that's my assumption right now. The first thing we're going to need to do is head over to retivas.com and download the CPS, or the programming software. From the main menu, go to Support, and then go to Resources. You'll see a couple of different options, where you can download programming software and device driver software. I did not need to install any drivers. It was automatically recognized by my Windows 10 32-bit Home Edition laptop. I scroll down until I find RT52. Click on that and that begins a download of a zip file. Once the zip file is downloaded, I will extract it to my downloads directory and run the installation program. I'd also like to note that the contents of the extracted folder include a README Now or a README First document. We'll take a look at that in a few minutes because there's some important information in there as well. I begin the setup routine by double clicking on the setup.exe application in the archive folder. I am prompted with an error message letting me know that Windows protected my PC. This is because the software does not have a digital signature. I also am prompted with a second message asking if I'm going to allow the application to make changes to my computer. I click yes and then I go through the default settings in the installation program. The README First file lets me know that some of the configuration settings are grayed out. To unlock these settings, I need to go through a sequence of key presses and then enter in a password. The sequence and the password are documented in this document. Once the application is open, I connect my radio to my laptop with the radio turned off. When I turn it on, just above my system tray, I get a message saying that Windows is setting up a device. Windows has auto-detected the radio and installs the necessary drivers. In order to make sure that everything is working correctly, from the main menu I select Program and Read. This will allow me to download the radio's configuration to the software. On the left-hand side of the screen, I click the plus next to RT-52 to access configuration options. Under Basic Information, I can change my frequency range. Here I type in 420 through 450 and 144 through 148 to restrict access to the amateur frequencies. Next, I go down and highlight Channel. By doing so, I can see access to channel number one. From here, I can enter in channel information. For example, I can choose a digital or analog channel. But what I want to try is changing the RX frequency to something outside of the ham bands. So as you can see, when I type in 451, which is outside, it automatically goes back to 420. Let's take a look at the bottom in the notes in the help view. And what you can see is that frequencies are limited to the band plan assigned to the radio. So that's a good thing. It shows that I can't bypass the settings that we made earlier in the video. Let's go ahead and try it on an analog channel and see if it works there. So here I enter in 149. And as you can see, 
it will not work. Let's go ahead and enter in a known frequency on the ham bands. And it looks like I'm able to progress through the settings. When you make a distinction between an analog and a digital channel, different fields for configuration become available. So make sure you go through all the settings to set up your channels correctly. Once we're done making any changes to the channel configuration, either adding, deleting, or modifying existing channels, we want to use the top menu item, Program, and then Write, to write our configuration back to the radio. This will ensure our band change and any channel configuration changes made their way back to the radio. Then you'll get a message saying Write Complete. What I do next is I turn off the radio, disconnect the cable, and then close out the program. We're going to now jump over to the radio and see if our changes took effect. Here you can see by using the rotation knob on the top of the radio and the keypad, I am unable to access frequencies outside the amateur band plan. So we're going to go ahead and call this a success. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up, subscribe, or leave a comment. Anyhow, I want to say thank you to watching, and thank you to Redivis for sending this radio for review. I really appreciate it, everybody.